That's what your intro music sounds like. You never listen to your own podcast, so you don't know what your like four second lead in music do, sounds like. Do we need to change it? Is it like cheesy now? I don't think so. I think it's just something like you associate with it. Like when I listen to Comedy Bang Bang or like Pete Holmes stuff, like they've had the same stuff for years. Of course, Reggie Watts did both of those. So maybe we need to have Reggie Watts do your is theme song. Available? Yeah, can I ask him? I don't know who this Reggie guy is. Oh, but... you don't? Oh, he's a musical genius. If you saw him, you would. All right. We're going to do this? Let's do it. Hey, She Slayers, and welcome to another episode of She Slays the Day podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lauren Brunslick, and today I am featuring Kirby Brunslick. Hello. I'm not your host. I'm your feature. You're my feature. We are co-host. I don't know. You don't make it on enough to be co-host. I think when I'm on, I act in the role of co-host. That is true. I do not have to babysit you like I do other guests. It's not the, yeah, the nature, and you're not as solicitous of my opinion. No, I don't give a shit about your opinion. <laughs> I get to listen to your opinion about everything all the time. You don't listen to my opinion about everything all the time. I don't By give listen, my... listen, I mean you talk and I hear it. I don't give my opinion about everything all the time. Most of the sure? time I coach you on what you're going through. I don't... And you give me your opinion on what I should do about what I'm going through. Okay, sure. Anyways, Kirby and I just had lunch, as we like to do on Fridays before we record an episode together. He tried luring me in with a gin and soda, and then I said no, and then he said, what about a nap? And I said... I just ate a big lunch. I'm sleepy. <laughs> Losers takes naps. Well, you said naps are for losers, which yeah. is your whole thing, your What's whole persona. What's funny is literally right before you had said that, Morgan sent me like an Enneagram meme on Instagram about threes refusing to take naps. And she's like, is this you? And I literally wrote right before I said that, naps are for losers and people who should be doing something more productive with their life, like cleaning the house, getting a workout in, or at least making a reel, doing something. For God's sake, be productive. Hashtag never slow down. Hashtag never nap. Hashtag heart problems. Hashtag <laughs> stress. Hashtag, Hashtag mental breakdown. Drinking coffee so I can just wake up. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. There's stuff to do. There's stuff to do, Brunswick. Gotta keep going. I'm going to make an app for threes that gamifies mental health so like you earn points and status by like mm -hmm. meditating or like staying as still as possible like you'll have to either hold your phone or wear some kind of device and it'll track your movement and you like get points for sitting uh, still i don't know i don't know if it would work I don't know. I'm I'm just, I know I can't be the only person. You know what? I know you're not the only person. It doesn't mean it's right. Well, what I meant to say, I don't <laughs> think I'm the only you. Enneagram. I don't think I'm the only Enneagram. Oh, no, I could see seven. And easy for you and... to say nine. If the, like, your spirit animal is literally a sloth. Not Kirby. Nines are. No, so, like, I know. Oh, shocking. You want to but what that. I'm saying is, I know I want to nap. I bet eights don't nap. I bet eights don't nap. I bet sevens don't. Can you picture Josh napping or my mom? That's no, my mom is sick. <laughs> yeah, your mom did take a really long nap last time, and I was like, your mom is really sick. <laughs> She's, She's been sick. napping for three hours, and it was like midday. I could see sevens napping. Just because it seems like the fun thing to do in the moment, or like they want to relax? Yeah, I, I don't would know. Think the whole like FOMO aspect of it would be like, I can't just sit here and be just by myself. What Do you think they can nap with their spouses? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, sevens, we need to hear. Fives, four fives, and I know fours, fours can nap. Mm -hmm. Fives, I bet, can nap. Sixes can nap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really those three, seven, eights. It all comes back to those those three, seven, eights. They tend to roll together. Ugh. Anyways, are you awake yet? Let's go take a nap. <laughs> we have work to do. All right. We have a question to answer today. Um, Since this is like, so normally... No, we can read the question. So I do feel bad because I really, like, pushed this question to the front of the line because mm -hmm. I found it, 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 like, struck a nerve with yep. me. Um, and I especially feel bad because that, I forgot her name, but remember the more recent, oh, no, actually, we haven't even released the episode yet. 
coming up very soon, oh. there's an episode that I answer with Margie, uh, Margie, I like keep forgetting it, Margie Smith, about a question that the girl wrote in a year ago. Oh. Yeah. And it was about, yeah, it was, it was about like handling, she was like pregnant with her other kid. So well, it hasn't even been released yet. So it's it was, tricky because sometimes we don't have the right expert or we don't have the right knowledge or we've done something kind of close. Mm -hmm. So things get bustled around. And then sometimes I just forget about them. Yeah. I mean, there is the shameless plug. You do do one-on-one -on -one consults sometimes if it's an emergency. Listen, if it's super important, you can bust to the front of the line and just get me on the phone and really figure out how much ADHD I have. The most recent one... I, I like to record them and send them to him because I'm like, you just, just don't even worry about taking notes because I just spew so much. I'm like, we have an hour. Let's do this. You just tap into it. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Ready for the question? Yes. This question is, I think I don't need to change your name, but I always feel bad not. We'll, we'll call her Ray. Ray? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like okay. Like Ray of the Sun? Like Ray? Like, well, like, does that matter? I just... Like Ray Bands? What is it? Just Ray, I just think of like Ray Liotta or Ray Romano. It is Ray Romano, actually. Way Wait, to blow his cover. He had a fucking question, and now I was trying to protect him. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. I've told people I'm a big deal, but I promise my, my friends who are big deals that I will keep their questions private. Anyways. It's actually Ray Liotta, not Ray Romano. I don't know who Ray Liotta is. Field of Dreams, Goodfellas. Oh, is he the... He plays, um, he's the bad guy in the B movie. Because he has a honey company. <laughs> I still don't know who you're talking about. But obviously this guy is worse. He plays Shoeless diverse. Joe in Field of Dreams. Okay, now I know who you're talking about. Okay. Is that still your favorite movie? Yes. Their movie all time. Number one. Not like this category. One movie. Yep. I know you know mine. If you're listening and you don't know mine, then you are not a true fangirl. You're fired. Um, okay. Dear Dr. Lauren and Kirby. She didn't actually write to Kirby. I included you in that. Thanks. Because this question makes me so mad that like I needed, this is like one of those things that would happen where I would consult you of like, what the Okay, so the listener highlight portion of this question is, I'm recently new to your podcast, but it has now become my religion. Interesting fact, the day that she wrote this in, I had three people reference the podcast via, or religion, somebody said like, I usually, it was Tony, said like, oh, I was listening religiously, but then blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. And it was three people in one day used the word religion. Hmm. Kind of made me uncomfortable, like... I don't know. It didn't Why would they make, make you uncomfortable? uncomfortable? Because I feel like it was supposed to, you know, like the Catholic in me was like, I don't know. I just thought oh, it was a weird trying to irony remember what? that three people would use that word in the same day. Like to oh, describe like threes, and that's interesting. <laughs> like to go Jesus to three times. And... I'm going to, I know. Mm. I, I'm going to go back to reading. For that sure was the to... end of the listener highlight. <laughs> I'm, recent, I'm recently new to your podcast. <laughs> And it has now become my religion. Now on to the question. Um, so now you may have answered the question I have for you in one of your episodes, but like I said, I'm new starting out from the very beginning. Oh, she's not a skip around type, which there are, there are different types of people who listen. To oh, them. like the, yeah, no, I, if I find a podcast that has a lot of episodes, I'm a skip around because mm -hmm. I don't I'm not going to go back to episode one if you have 300 episodes I'm going to find like guests I like or subjects I like correct I I would say I'm the same way because Morbid has like 200 and some episodes mm -hmm. and I have not I don't go back to the beginning but I think I've lost I've missed out on a lot of like the classic murderers because I haven't gone back to the beginning but I automatically assume... But that would be the thing, though, is if you went back and found the classic ones, that would still be skipping around. You'd just be looking for, like, Dahmer and Gein and Bundy mm -hmm. and... Yeah, like, I haven't listened to any of those. Oh, you haven't? No. Well, I mean, Dahmer and Gein are both Wisconsinites. You have I to know. listen to those. Um, Rep the state. But, so yes, I think if you have a lot of episodes, but even if I was finding this ep podcast, I mean, 
I don't know. Well, we, I don't know that we've really covered too many of the same topic multiple times. No, we've touched on a few that yeah, are really important. We've touched on leave student, twice. Student loans. Yeah. I've gotten like three or four, but like that's so top of mind for people. Yeah. Um, I bet you the next hundred episodes will start circling back and having, but I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's anything I've changed my mind on that I'm like, oh no, don't listen to what I said back then. Yeah, but there's probably evolution and... and Clearer I would not but... say I'm a better host now. So you Oh, you don't think so? You do? Yeah. I think Did so. you think I was bad back then? No, you're great back then. I just think it, when you do anything, you get better. I think I've gotten lazier. I think you are more able to go with the free train of thought and conversation, which I know seems like it's lazier, but I think it's more compelling. Mm hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Like, I mean, you can start reading a question and then have a 15-minute conversation in the middle of it and never finish the question. <laughs> Back to the question. Uh, okay, she's not a skip around. I am an associate in a clinic. I love my job in clinic. So we could have said that. We could have used her real name. We treat a wide variety, so obviously that includes pediatrics, my favorite. I recently had a newborn patient in the clinic that was being treated and doing well. Until we got a phone call from the parent stating our pediatrician doesn't think it's a good idea for her to be treated with chiropractic, so we are going to hold off until she says it's okay. What's the best way to go about the situation, helping the parents to understand it's okay for them to choose what they want for their baby instead of fearing their pediatrician? To which I responded, Oh, this makes my blood boil. Did you break something when your front desk told you that? <laughs> like, I'm just picturing my front desk being like, me being like, why did little Susie cancel? Uh, do you want to hear right said now? said they couldn't come anymore. <laughs> All right, so let's pray, and then we can start answering this. All right. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together again. Um, please be with the person answering the question. Um, please be with the doctor, the medical doctor in question. Please, Amen. Be, please be with the family. Um, it's hard to know what the right thing is to do, especially for parents. Um, it's a confusing time. So please allow us to somehow download and transmit your wisdom to help us and our audience be better communicators um, so that people can work together instead of against each other. And do what's best for the most vulnerable, the, the ones that you always seem to love the most, the children. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So God loves the children the most. Yeah, he uses it as an analogy for like innocence. I mean, he says you have to come to, to God like a child. So it's... he likes the spirit of children. Yeah, I mean. Because God's not supposed to have favorites. I think... The acceptance and innocence of children, the spirit of children, is what God wants everyone to have. Well, our children have to be dragged to church on Sunday, and I'm willingly going and praising him. You so... are very much considered confusing church with God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they are very different Anyways, things. You know, what I liked about your prayer is it brought up something that we didn't talk about um, for the episode that I think is extremely important because what you want to do is you want <laughs> I don't know maybe this is just me I want to jump to anger mm -hmm. I want to jump to defensiveness I want to you know explain I want to convince all this stuff but before you do any of that you have to remember the parents mm -hmm. like the parents are trying to do what's best. And so you have to, before you feel all these things and start taking action or whatever you're going to do, you have to like, remember that like, this is not a personal attack on you. Mm -hmm. It does seem like a personal attack on chiropractic, but whatever, not your, um, in this, it, the parents are trying to just make the best decision for their life. Yes. And this is the number one thing that I am really trying to do. I just have so much control issues when it comes to my patients of like, no, you need to do weekly. You fell apart when you like, you know, just like, ah. um, and I'm really trying to let go 
this year of that like need to control and with that comes like if this is what those parents decided was best for their child I can disagree I can disagree Mm -hmm. every single time somebody quits care every single time somebody quits care I disagree with that decision but it's not my kid it's not my life and so when it doesn't help you or them to be angry about it and hold on to it like mm -hmm. what what is done is done what's happening is happening and I can't think of many situations where an angry response changes someone's mind. No. And it may get someone to do something, but it doesn't change them. I mean, when I get angry, Ty does put her socks on much faster. Mm-hmm. So I would say I kind of disagree, but like when it comes to patience, yeah, people that you cannot dominate. So in addition to like viewing this through empathy, any correspondence with this patient, um, you, if you are going to reach out to the patient, we'll talk about that. It, you need to make sure that you do not position the patient in between, in, in an argument, in between you and the MD. Like, that is not, that's not appropriate. Mm-hmm. And in no way, and I don't think you'd intend to do that, but I think very easily... If you started calling the patient and we're like, meh, 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 I really feel like because the patient has to validate a decision they made. Yep. They decided. And if you attack, people to immediately agree, get defensive. Yeah. Or not to agree, but to listen to the pediatrician mm-hmm. to the point where they called your office and canceled. So now, like, you don't want to position your. They've kind. I don't want to say they've like teamed up with the pediatrician, but they've agreed. And so now anything that you say is kind of like you against them. Even though you're going, no, I'm against the pediatrician. They're like the mindset, people will continue to validate what they make. Absolutely. And the pediatrician got kind of the first shot in. And that's, that's really hard to do much with. And I would say the other thing is more than likely, I guess the story I'm telling myself here is the pediatrician got to them with fear Mm -hmm. and I would strongly advise don't don't sink to that level. Don't go back at them and go like, did your pediatrician talk to you about the risk of vaccines? Did they talk to you about the risk of all these procedures that they probably just tell you everyone's fine and they're actually not fine? Like your baby could be very injured by your well, pediatrician. I don't think that Dr. Ray would do that. In my head, I would do that. I know. I'm just saying because mm-hmm. different people react to things different ways of like, and that's one of those things that when someone goes like, you suck. The first thing you think is, no, you suck. Correct. Correct. So with this, I asked her more like information. I said, like, do you have the like, so on our paperwork, we ask who your primary care doctor is. And then we have a line that says, like, we believe that it's best when doctors can collaborate on your health. Do we have permission to reach out to them about your care? Ninety eight percent of people say yes. Mm -hmm. I would say 99 because like occasionally somebody puts no and you're like, Ooh, interesting. That's weird. Um, 99% of people, we don't actually reach out, but it is kind of that safety net for if I did need to, in this scenario, reach out and be like, Hey, what's going on? So uh, what's going on, Bob? Um, I could cause the patient signed off on it. Yeah. So the uh, Elise Rigney actually does something really productive with that, that line in the patient's paperwork where all pregnant women and pediatric patients, mm-hmm. when she finds out their, um, their doctor, they will send this letter. It's, kind of, it's like half form letter, half filled out. And it's basically like, dear Dr. So-and-so. Um, we're going to be, we're seeing your patient, blah, blah, blah for Mm -hmm. this. Um, I, she's very good about the wording in it. Um, like she, I don't think she's saying like, for instance, she wouldn't say we're seeing Timmy for colic. Mm. I think it's very like, this is what we're caring for patients with this can have symptoms of colic, your infect, you know, things like that yeah. or whatever. So it's a really, it's a good letter. Um, and so she does that kind of just to kind of be in there, in the know, like windows. Mm-hmm. I haven't had any bandwidth to actually execute that idea, but I, really I know we, I know we talked about it. Um, 
But yeah, I, I think that's, and later I think we'll talk a lot more about how to be proactive, and I think that's a really good mm-hmm. proactive step, but like in the moment of now, you oh, get yeah. the call. She said, yes, we do. We know this pediatrician. He's done this before. Um, and I think she said that another employee of the clinic takes her kid to this pediatrician and like still gets an earful about pediatric chiropractic, but because it's an employee of a chiropractic clinic, she's like, whatever. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, hater. So this is a repeat offender. That is interesting. That is. And she said they do send some kind of letter like that. And so okay. I said, you should stop. Stop sending him letters because she thinks that's what actually started this. Oh. Well, she sent a letter saying we're seeing and then at this kid's job. That's an interesting thing to modify because I would say that that's a good idea. And there might be, if you had enough, there's can kind of be a flood of like, I also have influence over 40 of your patients. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but no, that's an interesting thing to contemplate of until you get it resolved. Maybe pause those. Oh, I would. I don't know that there's any resolution for this dude. Is it a dude? I thought she said that they would Did come she? back when she said it was okay. Damn it. Hold on. Um, uh, when she... Ah, oh, it's a chick. Well, I still don't like her. Why would you all of a sudden like her because she's a woman? Because in my brain... Bad people are men? No. It was an older guy. Mm. It was like from the era... You know, like, I could write it off as, like, eh, you probably graduated medical school in the 80s. You were told lies about chiropractic, Mm -hmm. and you're still just... Well, our first pediatrician was an old Russian lady. Yeah. She wasn't that old. She was... She's, I think, maybe just had a very So now that it's a she, all of a sudden, what I'm picturing, the age has just dropped. Because it can't be an old woman. (laughs) We went from an old man to now she's, like, a woman in her 40s who should know better. (laughs) <laughs> I love that you're ready to play This is why I needed you on the podcast, of... <laughs> because I didn't trust that I could handle this question. Well, now, but... here's, a, here's a question. So, like, I know there's is two different... Is it a productive question, or are you getting on a tangent? It's a bit of a tangent, but... <laughs> so, when you get mad, I know there's two different expectations. Right. Am I supposed to be your ride or die and get mad with you, or am I supposed to no, be... No, in this, you're calming... my business partner. We're handling... We're answering a question, Kirby. Okay, just making sure. I've been wrong before. I didn't ask you on, I didn't feature you on this podcast to just be pissed with me. All right. This lady. There you go. This is terrible. Burn her house down. There's Don't burn her your, house down. There's your answer. Just be pissed. Okay. So what to do now? So now that we have all the background information, um, in my opinion, I would not reach out to this doctor anymore. Like I... I, mm, mm, like, I'm assuming they've sent research. I'm well, assuming okay. they've so sent all the nice things. Here's, here's the thing is, you can't just assume that. Like, did you ask this person? No. Okay, so let's assume they've done nothing. Like, this isn't an advice show, right? Yeah. So let's give advice. Okay, so what's the advice? First. Reach out like a calm person. Yes. Email or letter, I would say. You can't find anybody's email. So it's got to be a oh, letter. Oh, you can find people's email. I mean, I can't, can. but. Yeah. You can find a doctor's email? Yeah, I can find a doctor's email. Like, from the hospital website or, like, from their, like, old college account that... No, I would find their professional email. But okay. usually you can, if nothing else, um, almost all businesses give out emails. Mm-hmm. So even if you know someone who works in billing there and their name is Smith and their first name is Alex and their username is Smith, A-L-E, oh, so just gonna, like... at hospital.com. Okay, like... so letter or email... Mm-hmm. I would say the nice thing about a letter is you could send research. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the question. Do you just pretend that this mofo hasn't been telling kids or parents not to bring their kids? Like, do you just call it the elephant in the room of like, hi, Dr. Smith. Um, we've never met, but you seem to be pretty fucking opinionated about pediatric chiropractic. And I'm writing to tell you... That I know where you live, and here's some research. So not that. Okay, what would um, your letter say? My letter would probably be more along the lines of, Hi, Dr. Smith, uh, I know that we have shared some patients in the past, and it's come to my attention that you have some hesitancy about patients, especially pediatric patients, uh, going to chiropractic care. Um, I'm assuming that's because you're worried of, about safety, 
there's a common misconception about chiropractic and safety, especially with pediatric. I'd like to give you some information on how we adjust and the safety and efficacy of chiropractic. Damn, that was so much better than mine. That was off the dome, too. <laughs> that was so... Ladies and gentlemen, that is what Kirby Brunswick has to do for me um, two or three times a week. I'm like your reverse anger translator. Uh -huh. Okay, that was great. Here's the thing that I will say. Um, and then some, send some research. Yeah, send some research and maybe even like the anecdotes. Like I think it's more helpful... Like if they've never seen a pediatric adjustment to either suggest they go watch one of your YouTube videos or Facebook videos or give the analogy that we usually say of like adjusting a newborn is like less than the pressure that you would you like touching a tomato or how do you say it? Uh, pressure to eyeball, checking an avocado, yeah. checking brightness like of a tomato. It's yeah. not, you know, get if nothing else, if they're not going to read the research, if they're not going to go watch the video, have in there, if they're only going to read this letter have what you need them to know in this letter. We don't adjust babies like we adjust full-grown adults. There's not the twisting and big popping and cracking. It's very different, very gentle, very safe. Mm -hmm. Like, get that across, then give them some research because this is the hardest thing. I, I like research, but whenever you read an article, like, if you read from a chiropractic place, it's like, great, we did it, we proved it, look at this article. When you look at it from, you know, I have just a Google alert for like chiropractic. So every once in a while, I'll get like, is chiropractic real? And they'll reference the studies, but they'll be like, but none of them were double blind, fully yeah. controlled, large enough sample size. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what like, sucks. So if you're looking to discount chiropractic research, there's a good amount of reasons that medical doctors, if they're predisposed that way, will yeah. go, eh, but it's not yeah, blah, blah, absolutely. blah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think you need to have what you need known to be in that letter. Um, I would also say if you have additional questions, um, I would love to have a conversation with you, but come across very nice and very much like, I understand why you would be fearful. Mm -hmm. Here's a reason not to be fearful. Mm -hmm. My lines of communication are open. Uh -huh. Let's chat. Okay. That's probably the professional thing to do. The hard thing is, is then you got to. They're not going to. They're not going to. And then you got to okay. kind of leave well, it for a while. What if after that mm -hmm. you get another person who cancels? Then can you just never correspond with them again and write them off? Then you can never correspond with them again, and we can talk about how to work around them. Then do you send my letter? No. You motherfucker. I thought we talked about this. We should have... You never do that in writing because then they go, look at this crazy person. What you do is at a charity event, you sidle up to them next at the bar, and then you say all that shit. And then if they go, did you hear what you said to me? And someone goes like, no. And you go like, what are you talking about? I don't even know you. We should have put a like rated R on this episode. I should have seen the anger in me would have come across in lots of swear I words. I do have to click clean or explicit for Apple Podcasts. You do? And I've always clicked clean. You always click, click clean? They only give you the two choices and you say like one F word one time. Like it's clean. It's not like X rated. That's true. That's true. Okay. Anyways, so that's how we're handling that doctor. Now, what about the parents? So I think for sure you need, I do think that everybody should, if you do, if your staff doesn't know how to answer this question on the, or like how to handle this on the phone, I think it's a good training. Yeah. Even if you've never had this problem, now that you're listening to it, shoot, I'm sorry. It's going to like manifest somehow and you're going to wish you did. So what would we have our staff say to that? So first, the only thing I would say like to my staff is no matter what, we always say like, Yes, like when a patient is calling to cancel or whatever, mm. it's like, yes, of course we can go ahead and delete those appointments because that kind of disarms the parent or the patient. Yep. Like I feel like a lot of people, when they are calling to cancel something, they're just ready for a fight and they mm -hmm. feel like they're going to have to defend themselves. And so like disarm the parent right away of like, of course, yes, I will go ahead and cancel those. Um, and then I would want my staff to like, try and empathize with that parent to parent of just like, not as like a chiropractic CA, but just like that had to be really disheartening to hear that your pediatrician wasn't supportive of the choices you were making for your kid. Like, I'm really sorry that that sucks as a parent anytime that like, you're not sure what's the right thing to do for your kiddo. Mm -hmm. And then I would probably say, um, tell my staff to say, 
I know Dr. Lauren is going to be, um, I don't want to say super sad. I know Dr. Lauren is going to, disappointed. Going to be disappointed because um, I don't want them to feel like, oh, now I have to cheer up Dr. Lauren. Um, I know Dr. Lauren is going to want to uh, talk to you or reach out. Follow up. Follow up is a good way. I know yeah. Dr. Lauren's going to want to follow up with you guys um, just to make sure everything's okay or I don't know. There would be some kind of, is there is, is there, okay? is there a question in the middle there of like, the, do you, do you specifically have... With, is it okay if Dr. Lauren calls you? Okay. So you would then ask the questions of, I was wondering where in there do you get at like... So do you have specific questions about the safety of pediatric chiropractic? Right. And then so they get that question and arm you with that? Or do you call and ask that? So I think you could do either. So there's a part of me, like the introvert in me, does not want to call that patient because mm -hmm. it's awkward. And I don't want to. It's, it's, I'm, it's a time where I'm actually very empathetic, where I feel like it's awkward for the patient. Yeah. Where I sure. feel like I can just put myself in their shoes of like, I'm just trying to break up with you. No, I don't want to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Like, um, so like I do feel bad. So it is almost like, well, maybe we wouldn't have the staff say, is it okay if Lauren calls you? Maybe the staff would just go like, do you have specific safety concerns about chiropractic or do you have any concerns about chiropractic mm -hmm. and just have the staff and then the parents either gonna say like yeah i just didn't know or they're like well no but my pediatrician said no and so and then it's like okay then do the staff say like okay do you want dr lauren to call you? like i don't know what would you have the staff say it's tricky, too, because it, when you recommend, there's also, like, the systems and procedures side of my head. Like, mm -hmm. if this is something that happens often enough, um, you don't want to be tying up your docs with probably not I, I fruitful. doubt it's happening often enough. Okay. I bet it's pretty rare. I, I would like the doctors to handle it, if at all possible, but I would like them armed with information before they got on that phone call. So, yeah. personally, I would say have the staff collect, like, were there specific concerns that mm -hmm. your pediatrician raised or that you have that is the reason for you stopping care. Um, okay, that's totally understandable. Thank you for that info. Um, Dr. Lauren is going to be you know, disappointed that she's not able to see little Susie anymore, um, and she would love to answer your questions. Would you mind if she gave you a call sometime in the next day or two? Yeah. And then you get to know if they're concerned about stroke mm -hmm. or that the pediatrician said chiropractic doesn't help with colic. Those are two very different conversations. Yeah. That you would want that information for. Yeah. Um, I had a conversation with a physical therapist around here years ago, and it really just stuck in my head. So basically, he and I have been, like, friendly since I started type of thing. Mm -hmm. Like, see each other at fundraisers. You know, he's like a business owner, entrepreneur mm -hmm. type thing. So he's just a little different than other PTs. And... Um, I had one of his athletic directors, so I had a, a teenager who quit care, be, and she said, the athletic director said, I shouldn't be doing chiropractic. And I had a very similar blood boiling moment. Mm -hmm. um, and so a week or two later, I happened to see him at, I don't even know what, but as we were like leaving, I was like, hey, BJ, question for you. Um, I had a patient say this, like, and it came from Ashley, your athletic director. Like, does, does she, because this PT, the BJ, claims to, like, oh, support chiropractic. Mm -hmm. And he kind of hemmed and hawed, and he said, you know, I'll talk to her for sure. I have a feeling that, in my experience, the teenager heard what they wanted to hear. And he kind of said, like, he's like, uh, he, he kind of relayed a story where, like, basically he had gotten in trouble, like, from a basketball coach because he was a soccer coach because, like, the basketball coach said, like, hey, my players are saying that you don't want them in the gym and that they should be doing the soccer. And he's like, it was nothing like I said. And ultimately, like, they wanted an people they will they use wanted an other out. people as an excuse. Yeah. So I know this isn't, like, the most comforting thing, and we don't know this patient, but what I will say is that my patients who 
love pediatric chiropractic would do exactly what this employee does, you know, and go just like, oh, cool, thanks. You don't thanks like for it. Your opinion. Thanks for your opinion. Yeah. But a patient who maybe so either a just got super scared mm-hmm. could be brand new patients and like oh we loved it but our doctors said we're gonna die, um, or they were kind of looking for a way where like you know what in the beginning it was great because she had the pooping issues but now she's pooping mm-hmm. and why are we still going and like they just kind of needed that excuse to quit yeah so that is a reality that like. And I would say either way, I would not, well, you're going to have this conversation with them so that they go away knowing you care and having all the information. Even with the conversation, I would put the odds of keeping them as a patient very well low. below 25%. Very, very low. Do not, right? yeah, I would not go into that conversation trying to get them back on the schedule. You're going to come across defensive. I think you're going on, like, I completely respect you're choosing quick care. I just did want to answer any questions that you may have or concerns because yep. we want you to know that like what we have been doing is extremely safe and it leaves the door open for them coming back yep. when they're a little less scared or whatever yep. it's more about reputation relationship management yes. versus winning a sale by that's any a means. really good point so yes okay so now what do you do for future so now this person's a repeat offender yeah this Sorry, I got a big smile on my face because now it's strategy time. Yeah. And I like strategy time. So what I would say is you bet your ass any pregnant mom I had. Now, if you don't know, my petty game is strong. Real strong. Oh, let me tell. Can I tell this? Just even Which story? <laughs> just today's story. So I, about two years ago, um, the dentist I was seeing, pandemic hit. He stopped coming. Because of, like, concerns with Mm. yada, yada, yada. And I look for any excuse to not go to the dentist. Or I think the dentist closed down. You just don't like going to the dentist. Oh, yeah. Like, my appointment got canceled. So, anyway, so it takes me, like, for, uh, like, a year and a half to actually get around to rescheduling this. And at this point, he never returned as a patient. So, I'm like, well, I'm going to go to another clinic. We had a friend who's a dentist. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm like, all right. Right? The hand that washes the hand, right? So, anyway, so this wife um, of an employee there of my old dentist comes today is a complete jerk just a jerk really jerky I was very very nice and like we refunded money like that we I just said like I understand we're not your style of chiropractic I'm so sorry for the confusion I recommended a more pain focused chiropractor who is more like one and done um, really tried to like make her happy and then she left, and then I officially emailed my old dentist, who's this wife Who is connected to, and said, like, because occasionally this dentist, I never, like, called and broke up with him. Yeah. So, Kate, like, every so few months. So, you have disgusting teeth, not So, every few months, I get up. a postcard, a phone call from my old dentist being like, hey, you're way overdue. So, like, literally, this patient who was terrible to us, like, so mean, left, and I just, like, sent an email to my old dentist, not him directly, but the front desk, like... You can officially discharge me. I am going to another dentist. Um, Thank you so much for your previous care. Sincerely, Lauren Brunswick. Now, do you actually think any of that is going to get back to her? You think so? Um, mm, mm, I don't know, but it made me feel good. (laughs) At least someone feels good. Okay. Anyways, what were we talking about? We're talking about Uh, how do we... Any pregnant woman. Yes. So do you have your pediatrician picked out? And I would totally make sure I recommend other pediatricians, Mm -hmm. which is not a petty game. It's just like... No, you want to, you want to know when you have a strong philosophy that the medical and chiropractic community should all work together, you want to recommend what's best for parents based on your own philosophy. So of course you want to work with, you want to steer people towards pediatricians who you can work with, who you know have a slightly more holistic bent that are okay with chiropractic that, you know, aren't going to recommend shitty Quitting? outcomes for them like mm-hmm. um you know what this is another kind of side but this is an important another story mm-hmm. so apparently i'm pretty what's it, confrontational i didn't know this so i had a patient doing chiropractic uh we kind of hit a wall i referred to a physical therapist mm-hmm. and then a week later the patient called our clinic to quit because she said the physical therapist said I should hold off on chiropractic for now and just do physical therapy. I remember this one. Mm-hmm. So 
I don't remember how I got, oh, because like I referred, I don't know, somehow I got the name of the physical therapist. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was, and I straight up called the physical therapist um, and just said like, hey, I just want to clarify kind of like what you Mm -hmm. did, but like you can actually get a hold of a physical therapist, not an MD. And I was like, Hey, I referred, because I refer multiple patients a year to this clinic. Yeah. And I was just, and and uh, I was like, hey, I just wanted to follow up because I know you're seeing Molly. Uh, she said she's getting great results. Gr- yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for referring Molly. Yeah. And then you're also seeing Patty, who I sent there. Um, question, do you have concerns about chiropractic? Because Patty said that you, like, I just said, like, yeah. Patty said you recommended she quit. And this physical therapist, like, you would have thought I, like, sucker punched him, like, in all the air out of his lungs. And he was like, I, Lauren, I promise I did not say that at all. And we kind of came full circle to the fact that he said, like, I think she wanted to quit. Yep. And was, like, she kind of kept asking me, do you think it'd be okay if I just did physical therapy? Yeah. And it didn't surprise me with that patient but at all. But it at least keeps that physical therapist on their toes going forward because you are a referral mm-hmm. engine for them. Like, But yeah, so it is kind of back to that story of like, patients are going to do what they want to do. Yeah. But I don't remember where I was going. Well, we were starting with like who you refer to and the mm-hmm. relationships you have, which I think is kind of the overarching point of what to do going forward mm-hmm. is you avoid the situation you're in with the repeat offender if you can, by building really good relationships. And I think we've talked about this on an episode before of like reaching out to um, pediatricians and other medical professionals in the area, the birth, like the OBGYNs. Mm -hmm. We had like a gift thing that would get in a a bag for new moms. We taught a class at the hospital. Like we had good ins there so that if they, even if they didn't know us personally, they knew the brand and they knew people who knew us who would go like, oh no, they're not, quacks they're right they're good people. or they might think we're quacks still but they're like yeah but she's a nice quack yeah we would drop off like baskets with k cups and clementines and like trail mix bags and popcorn bags to the to the nurses yep well and that, i think that's another good point is it's not always so one you want to have a really good relationship with as many pediatricians in town as you can so that you know who's good who's bad who to refer to who not to refer I to her pedi- I thought there was... No, they're just bad. There's nice ones. Agree, disagree. <laughs> Have a good relationship with the pediatricians <laughs> if you can. Um, failing that, and even if you do... The nurses are the next step, too, of mm-hmm. if you have the nurses, and we see a lot of nurses yes. at the clinic, they're kind of the first line, and they're going to be asking a lot of the questions. They're the ones in the room the most. I mean, think about when you bring mm-hmm. your kid in. Talk to the nurse for a long time about mm-hmm. what you're doing and what's happening. And then you talk to the doctor for 45 seconds about acute problems while he looks in eyes and ears. Yeah. Like, so get those nurses so they're on your side so that when they're doing an intake and they're asking those questions, they can reinforce and go, oh, I go there too. Yeah. Like, that's that's a win. And especially with even this doctor, if you can get her nurses to be patients, like, that's a nice little win of like kind of infiltrating from all sides. I mean, that's kind of easier said than done. Are you going to do like look up their address and go drop a card in there? No, but you just do general stuff for all the staff. And while this doctor might be sitting in the corner going like, oh, that's some bullshit. Everyone else goes like, oh, half off a new patient exam. Like, or I have felt stressed or run your Facebook ads targeted at people in the medical profession within 60 miles of your clinic. Can you do that? Yeah. As long as there's enough people. We would have trouble around here because there might not be a large enough audience size. Mm -hmm. But then we could actually expand the geographic area and you'd just run into nurses in St. Paul would be seeing our ads. But also nurses in Rice Lake would see our ads. Yeah. So if you want to get, like, true petty game strong, you can, like, target some stuff. Where are we at with geofencing? Is geofencing still a thing? It seems to, like, get traction. It started... just going on the petty game here. When I looked into geofencing, I think there may be... um, security concerns or not security, but um, legal things that you can't advertise with geofencing for health products all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't, didn't get a clear answer on that. I know you can do it for like selling cars and stuff, but then it's, 
tracking where someone went into a medical facility kind of gets in a weird gray zone of HIPAA. Yes, I can see where Of like, that they can't happen. sell you that info or tell you where someone went, so. So if you can't sway the pregnant women to not go to this pediatrician, who's a jerk, um, I would definitely be aware, like when, before that two month appointment comes. Um, and what I would do is I would be like, oh, hey, so little Susie's doctor is Dr. Smith, right? Um, they'd be like, yeah, they'd be like, cool. Have you met her yet? Do you like her? And like, most of the time they don't really meet their pediatrician until the two month appointment. Okay. Um, maybe the pediatrician has come in, um, at birth, but like usually it's just whatever pediatrician's on staff that day to like kind of do this one through. So maybe they're like, oh yeah, we met her after birth. She seemed really nice. Be like, yeah, she is super nice. I do want to give you a little heads up though. Um, for some reason, she's just not a fan of pediatric chiropractic. Um, I've tried giving her some research. I, I think she thinks we're doing something different. Like, I think she thinks we're like cracking babies or something like that. So up to you. Don't expect a pat on the back if you bring up like a lot of our patients when they tell their doctors like, oh, you know, so-and-so is doing so well. We've been getting her just since birth. I think that like, a lot of times the doctor's are like, oh, that's fantastic. Don't expect a pat on the back. In fact, you may actually get a little bit of a, a lashing. Just want to give you a heads up. I promise what we're doing is fantastic. You know yeah. it's good. If but you like, have any questions, please let me know. If you have any questions, but... let me know. But like, not telling you not to tell her, but just good well, luck if you do. <laughs> it gives you that same first mover advantage that mm -hmm. right now she's been doing to you. Mm -hmm. So she gets to say like, raise the doubts and then you have to be defensive. So in this case, you're not even raising the doubts, but just saying, like, be aware of this. So then when they do take a shot, one, it's not a surprise. And, and two, the patient's just kind of like in their head. I'm assuming they're going like, oh, I was warned you would do this. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that's the thing of if it is people's minds, like you said before, do want to defend their decision and they do want to be on a side. So if you kind of fired the first shot, then it's you to verse the doctor in that case. Mm -hmm. So it's a good preemptive move. Um, and, and I don't think anyone's going to go and have that argument with their MD on mm -hmm. your behalf, but at the same time, they won't be questioning their decision. Yeah. They're just going to nod their head and yeah. And that way, if when you're kind of prepping your patient, like, Hey, no big deal. Like most pediatricians around here love us. This one, for some reason, has a stick up her ass. Don't say that. Um, then if the patient does get concerned, like where they're like, oh, like, wait, so do they think it's not safe? Then right there before the patient get too far down any like wormholes in their brain of like, is this safe? Is it like, and be like, this is completely safe. I can give you research. I can, you know, like, yeah, you see you what we're doing. To, yeah. You've seen how gentle the adjustments are. I just don't think she has. So, um, so I think we covered this. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you want to have your staff know what to say to a patient. You want to follow up with the doc with a letter mm -hmm. and as good a research as you can find, but pretty much expect no follow up. Mm -hmm. Um, figure out if your policy is going to be that you're going to call the patient, but you're not calling to try and convince them to get back on. You're just calling to see like, I want you as a parent to feel empowered and like safe. Like, do you have any questions about, mm -hmm. um, and burn down the hospital? Yep. Pretty much. Um, on that, like reaching out to the doc thing, I think it's a good thing to also reiterate that on the relationship piece, that doc is potentially lost to you. And it's, it's always hard to like repair a bad relationship, but with open-minded doctors, wherever you can be building that relationship. I know when we came to town, we sent stuff to um, some of the pediatricians in town that mm -hmm. said like, just want to make sure you know what we're doing because we're going to be sharing patients. This is not, you know, snaps and cracks like you're used to seeing with a chiropractor. Here's what pediatric chiropractic is. Safe and effective. We want to work with you. So you preemptively get that mm -hmm. so that if nothing else in the back of their mind, even if the, even if the doc's like, eh, in general, I'm not a big fan of chiropractic, they know you're that one that reached out 
that like specializes, that does Came things different, yeah. like so that they may still not love chiropractic. But if there is one, you go, oh yeah, I've heard they in their minds go, oh yeah, I've heard of them. They're the ones who do it different. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so there you go, Doctor Ray. Leota. And uh, have someone in your corner who will listen to your anger, but then translate it into reasonable speech. <laughs> I still am just picturing my staff just being like, no, you tell her. I'm not telling her. She's in a good mood today. <laughs> but I'm so reading bad. that Gary Vee book, and I do believe, so that is something like my anger, even if it's not towards my staff, I do think it creates a, a place where the staff, even if the staff is afraid to tell me or to like get me upset, I feel like it's still... Like something that needs to be gone. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want the staff to be afraid of. of Even if you're not mad at them, right? You're mad, and you're. It's kind of like nobody wants mom mad. Yeah, and you're like an energy ball. Like yes, I am an energy it ball. changes the room. So I'll use my energy for good and mm-hmm. love, and I will not get mad at my staff, but I will burn the house down. <laughs> Just kidding. We've burned no houses down. I have burned zero houses down. And, and I you should been, not either. That is not That advice. is not our <laughs> advice. There's going to be the legal person. Our answer was not to burn it down. So, all right. We did it. I think so. Mm-hmm. I think we covered it. If there's uh, more follow-up questions to this, please write in. Oh, um, yeah. I would love... Or just share your stories. Yeah, I'm I would sure people love have some good ones. to hear your stories. Please send me a DM. And I, I'm like Girl Riot. Like, so I will, anytime, if you need someone to just, like, break a wine bottle and, like, bring it to a fight, I am, like, mm. Do you know how hard wine bottles are to break? I doubt it. Like, against the edge of, like, a counter? I think there's some pretty sturdy. Like, empty. Yeah, I know. But still, I think it's harder than you think. Well, I guess we're going to, guess I know what we're doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there'd be something easier? Because, like, I'm just picturing, like, a beer bottle. Beer bottle's easy. Beer bottle. Okay. And not classier, but, like... More usable. More usable than, like, a broken wine bottle. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Especially at a bar. That's not like they give you the whole bottle. They usually just pour it by the glass. But I don't drink beer. Just grab the next person. <laughs> so grab that person's beer, smash it. Maybe the doctor like, drinks beer, then you're stealing her drink <laughs> and making a weapon. Don't come after my pediatric Cairo friend, motherfucker. All right, well, until <laughs> next week, she's Bye. Bye.